Hello everyone. The paper I'm going to present is diverse and specific clarification question generation with keywords. My name is Zhi Zhang, a first year math student from SJTU. This is a joint work with my advisor Kenny. First, I'd like to give a brief introduction to this work. In e-commerce websites like Amazon, it is common that the product description can't cover all user needs. Therefore, customers need to ask questions for the missing information. For this kind of question, we refer to them as clarification questions, questions asking for missing information in the context that are the focus of this work. It can be seen that users' clarification question can be helpful as it can alleviate the missing information problem, but relying on such user feedbacks may have some drawbacks. Missing information may have already discouraged users, and the process of raising CQs also delays the processing. The recently proposed clarification question generation can be a promising solution for these problems, as it uses generation, generation algorithm to help authors get the imitation of user CQs during writing so that they can fix the problems before they cause losses. So promising, previous works on CQ gen still have some limitations. First, they assume generating one CQ for each context. However, as we can see on Amazon, a product can have some user questions, so a single question won't be able to cover various user needs. Second, methods based on C2C model trained with maximum likelihood objective tend to ask trivial questions. Those questions are unlikely to be mixed by the writers, so their values are limited. To overcome these limits, we propose a writing assistant as a solution that can generate diverse and specific questions. The authors can first write a draft of the product description, then click on the question button to request system for, button for the questions. Then the author can check whether there are missing information according to the generating algorithm questions and fill them in. To implement such desired solution, we need to tackle the following challenges. First, it should meet the basic requirements of CQs. Next, the generated questions need to be specific enough to meet the particular needs. Here, the specificity of a question is determined by its applicable range. For example, the specificity of generated questions generated by MLE model, like what are the dimensions, can be raised to almost every product, so they are unlikely to be missed by the author. On the other hand, specific questions like is it 110 volts or 220 volts can only be applied to electrical appliances, especially for customers using 220 volts. So such specific questions can better cover particular needs. We also need to generate diverse questions for the same product so that we can cover wider user needs. Existing approaches like Beam Search are already capable of generating multiple questions. However, as the example here shows, the generated results are semantically identical, so there is actually only one useful question out of a group. In contrast, a diverse group can raise questions from distinct aspects to, to better serve a goal. Next, I am going to introduce the approach proposed in this paper. Our approach is based on findings about keywords. Here, we define keywords as the non-stopping verbs, nouns, and adjectives. We find that the main semantics of a question can be covered by keywords, as it is shown in the examples. Therefore, we hypothesize that we may control the generation with keywords as condition, so that we can generate specific questions with specific keywords, and generate diverse questions with different keyword sets. We can extract some keyword-related knowledge from the training data. Given the definition, we can find keywords from the CQs in training data. All distinct keyword terms will constitute a keyword dictionary, which we want the model to pay special attention to. We also can the co-occurrence between pairs of words in the dictionary. The resulting co-occurrence graph will be used for keyword clustering, which we will introduce later. As a result, we propose our model named KBCNet in a seek to seek model equipped with keywords-related modules proposed in this work. I will introduce the components below. First, I want to introduce the keyword predictor. It takes the concatenation of 
title and description as input. For each word in the dictionary, we predict if it will be a keyword in the generated question. So it is a multi-label binary classification problem. We use the TechCN model for this, and we can get keyword logics as output, which is the unnormalized probability. We then introduce keyword condition generation. Compared with traditional generation, our proposed model takes in additional con condition, ZS, deselected keywords. So we can generate different questions given different keyword sets. Now, suppose we are generating questions for a Belgian waffle maker. Given the keywords voltage, machine, the generation result is what is the voltage of this machine. But if we use another set of keywords, dimension, waffle maker, we can get what are the dimensions of the waffle maker. Keyword condition generation is achieved with the keyword bridge component. It feeds the features of the selected keywords to both encoder memory and decoder input so that the generation process is guided by the information of keywords. Then we introduce the keyword selection part. As we have illustrated in previous slides, the selection of keywords will affect the generation result. To achieve keyword selection, we use a binary mask on keyword logics. Features from unrelated keywords will have a mask of zero, so it won't be used in generation. To generate the mask in the training stage, we just set the mask of keywords in existing CQ as one. In the inference stage, however, the CQ is to be generated, so we can't extract the keywords. Therefore, we will generate the masks from the predicted keyword logics. We've tried three methods for this. The first one is threshold section. We use keywords with predicted probability better than a threshold alpha. The good point is that we may get different numbers of keywords for different samples, which is close to the data distribution. But we can only get a single deterministic keyword set from this approach. So the second approach is to use sampling. You can randomly sample keywords according to a predicted distribution for several times so that we can get diverse keyword sets. But the number of samples each time should be set in advance, so it is fixed across samples. Moreover, both of the previous approaches have the same, same limitation, that there may be semantic incoherence within a keyword set. For example, the top five keywords in the picture can be clearly divided into two groups, and two groups are unlikely to coexist in one question. Therefore, we propose keyword class three. Given a set of keywords like the top five one here, it uses special class three on the induced subgraph of the keyword co-occurrence graph. If two words can be classed in the co-occurrence graph, then they are likely to coexist, and thus coherence in, is ensured. We can also get different size variant keyword groups for diverse generation. So it has the advantage of the both two previous methods. Next, I'm going to show our experiment results. Home and kitchen is our main data set. The statistics and an example of the data set is shown below. We use three metrics for automatic evaluation. Distinct three measures trigram diversity within all generated questions, a measurement of global diversity. Blue measures the similarity between ground truth questions and the generated ones. It mainly considers n-gram precision. Media also measures the similarity, but it considers f-score and also uses synonyms in comparison, so it might be more accurate. Then we describe the metrics for human judgment. We evaluate relevance, logicality, seeking new information, and the specificity for each sentence. Since we are generating a group of questions, we also have group-level metrics. The first is the number of useful questions after removing problematic ones, and those repeat with each other. The second one is the number of redundant questions, which is calculated as the number of valid questions in a group minus the number of useful ones. Here we describe the main compared methods. MLE refers to the vanilla C2C model trained with the MLE objective. It can achieve a certain level of diversity from the results of different beams on for beam search. HMAP is a model proposed for diverse 
machine translation. It can be adapted to tackle the secret gene task. The model's mutual distribution allows it to generate diverse results. Finally, there are some variants of the proposed KPC net. We will pay special attention to KPC net cluster, which uses spectral clustering for keyword selection. This is the result of automatic evaluation. You can see from the fourth row that KPC net significantly outperforms baselines in the things three and media while getting a comparative proof. This result shows that KPC net can promote better global diversity and possibly higher quality, which will be further examined with human, human judgments. For KPC net truth in last row, we gave KPC net the ground truth keywords for the keyword mask to investigate the performance upper bound given perfect keyword prediction. The advantage is very significant, proving that keywords have the controllability over generation and the model still has great potential if we further improve keyword prediction. Before reporting the quantitative results of human judgment, I'd like to give a qualitative example of these methods and make a comparison. First, we show the group generated by MLE. The three questions are all relevant. However, they are repetitive to each other, all asking about the size. Therefore, there is only one useful question, and the other two are redundant. The next group is generated by HMAP. We can see that the result is more diverse. However, the second question is very strange, and the third one asks for existing information, set of two in the title. As a result, there is only one useful question, despite no redundancy. Finally, we show the results of KPC net cluster. The three questions are all reasonable and can cover diverse assets, despite the first one color is already mentioned in the title, so it has two useful questions, and is the best overall. Now we show the quantitative results of human judgments. It can be seen that all KPC net variants can achieve superior performance in relevance and specificity. The performance on new info is also competitive, but the performance on logical is worse than MLE. We presume that MLE achieves higher logical score because its generation is very conservative, thus sacrificing diversity and specificity. Among all KPC net variants, KPC net clusters performance on all dimensions is among the best, especially on number of useful questions, showing that it can effectively promote diversity. Finally, we have three conclusions. We propose the task of diverse CQ gen to tackle the problem of missing information in product descriptions on e-commerce platform. We propose KPC net to generate diverse CQs and promote specificity. Future works may include utilizing richer external knowledge to improve the keyword prediction. Below are the QR code of our Adept Lab and the GitHub report of this paper. Thanks for your listening.